Greetings, gentle viewer. Tis I, your humble astrologer, Art Anonymous, at your service. And this morning, low this early Sunday morning, um, I was overcome with happiness when I was inspired to look at the chart of Mr. Ronan Farrow. And I have a lot of stuff I need to get doing right now. Um, so I love wearing veils and drinking coffee and, and talking into the phone, but um, I have like paint work I have to do. But I just couldn't resist sharing this. So, um... I normally astro explain people who freak me out so much that I need to understand what the hell is going on there. You know what I mean? Mick Baldini, perfect example. I see this weirdo's face on TV. Every word that he says just makes me go, what? You know, and then eventually I have to just, okay, I'm going to have to look up his chart at this point. Can't deal with you anymore. Same, a lot of them, you know. So I realize it, it wouldn't probably hurt me any to actually look at the charts of nice people too, but I do feel it's kind of not really nice to pry into someone's personal business. So I'm just going to keep it kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to try to be a jerk. I'm not trying to be intrusive <laughs> with him. So, but Ronan Farrow's chart is spectacular and it will certainly be useful, I think, for gentle viewer Sandy with dealing with her complicated Mars on Antares issue, which is giving her certain issues in dealing with men and relationships and life in general. Probably gives her a certain amount of anger issues to have to deal with. Um, and Terry's is the little demon pit opposite of Aldebaran, which is the headquarters of the Archangel Michael. So that's the axis where we see, and, and Terry's Aldebaran is the axis where we see people choosing to either become leaders to learn how to do their anger management and turn their anger into clarity of mind so that they can have clarity of action, right? When you see a very highly evolved Mars, you're talking about the Archangel Michael at the top end. Like you could see... If human beings, our Mars is generally here, somewhere in the middle, somewhere in this continuum, or maybe here or there, you know, wherever it depends on who you are. Nicholas Cruz is going to be a lot lower, right? Mine is going to be a lot higher. Um, Aldebaran would be here, the best Mars you could have, the clearest mind, the purest vision, and the strongest, clearest action for the highest good of all. That's Archangel Michael, right? Then you have the ordinary human being anywhere on this continuum. And then at the bottom there, you will have Antares, which is where, no, I'm not even trying to do the right thing. I'm not even trying to make appropriate decisions. I feel angry, and so I'm going to express that in a reckless, impulsive, and aggressive way because that's what Mars does when he's unevolved. Mars evolves into a wise old king by having a lot of battle scars, basically. Someone who has taken enough licks through that aggressive, impulsive, rampaging Mars energy all the time, of wanting, always wanting to break something, um, there are, there's a price to be paid for that. And so after a certain point, souls can evolve until they don't want the conflict anymore. They no longer seek that conflict, and that's when they become really evolved leaders, and that's what the Mars Aldebaran is. I normally like to start with the sun because everything does start with the sun and that's important to mention before I start getting into specific planets, that is. Um, he has just a big old stellium in Sagittarius. He has the sun, Pallas Athena, Uranus, Mercury, Saturn, and the moon. The moon is at 12 Sagittarius, then Saturn at 24, <coughs> Mercury 25, Uranus 26, sun 27. Oh, and then Pallas is actually at the beginning of Capricorn, <coughs> excuse me, which actually makes quite a bit of sense to me. So all of that stuff is happening in Jupiter, and then all of that stuff is also trying to his Jupiter, which is in the second house in Mars at 19 Mars, conjunct asteroid Aries the bomb thrower, Eris the bomb thrower, and all that is in Aries. So <coughs> this is a, excuse me, <coughs> This is a very evolved Jupiter. If I've been discussing Donald Trump as the lesser evolved form of Jupiter, where you see someone, Jupiter is, is the fractal understanding that the all are the one and the one is the all. As I said in another video that I made, Jupiter in the ninth house, how to understand Jupiter, that is a very strong thing theme of this chart. This is a person who does see all of humanity in himself and takes action on the behalf of all. When, when Jupiter is poorly evolved, it becomes a self-focus. They feel entitled to 
everything for all. Like they, they get that they are a reflection of all other people, but then they somehow lose the fact that the needs of the other people are also important and valuable. Like they become real only to themselves because Jupiter can be very self-serving. So, but here we see someone who by his behavior, we can clearly say is not so self-serving. And I know that there's lots of haters and critics and who think this whole Me Too thing has just gone way too far. Um, but you know, he's not serving himself other than protecting his sister and his family. It's where it started, okay? And so this high integrity, strong Jupiter young man um, has decided to take that life challenge and make the world a better place with it. That's what I've seen him do. But there's a lot to talk about in this chart. He has all of that stuff, as I said, in Sagittarius. He's got the moon not only directly on Antares, so this can be something very valuable for gentle viewer Sandy with her Mars Antares issue and her challenges that that brings with it. Ronan Farrow has the moon on Antares, which is um, going to be someone who's going to have trouble with their moods and their anger. This is someone who has found an appropriate way to channel his anger. That's what he's doing with it. Um, not only is the moon on Antares, that is on the midheaven, okay? So this is his brand, is, is his anger. And look, he's really, he's really refined himself as a human being enough that those pieces that he's doing don't read as rage because he's applied his intellect, his skills at doing what he does professionally. Jupiter also rules publishing, right? And getting your words out there and making, breaking through new barriers. So, um, all of that, he's just doing it very well. This is how a highly evolved person does things, in other words. Instead of just writing angry blog posts, in other words, Ronan Farrow manages his anger in a long-term and productive manner. Part of that is going to be, there's so many eye-popping things to discuss in this chart. So with, let me get back to this. With Moon and, and Terry's right on the midheaven, that means he has Aldebaran, <clears throat> right on the IC. And the IC is the opposite of the midheaven. If you want to think of the midheaven as the person's brand, what the, what the celebrity form of them that everybody knows about them, um, then, the, uh, then the IC is what's true in their heart of hearts. At the bottom of their hearts, in the most private place that only they can know, that he has Aldebaran. So this is something where he's famous for the demon stuff, up there on, 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 on Taris. I don't think he's, to me, he doesn't come across as like a moon person, but it might be intuition, not just the moodiness and the changeability and the, I would expect someone with the moon on Antares at all to be very grumpy and, fr and moody and changeable on you and someone who could lash out and fly off the handle. But um, that does not appear to be who he is or that's not how I see him. So maybe it's the intuitive aspect of the moon and the ability to reflect other people. Maybe the moon is just literally sitting up there on Antares reflecting the light of Aldebaran, just as the moon in the sky reflects the sun. Um, that's a beautiful little interpretation that I just saw. So another fascinating thing about this chart, he has Regulus right on the descendant. So with Regulus, we're expecting a fall. We expect people to rise to the top and then plummet spectacularly to the bottom. But you got to keep in mind, just because Harvey Weinstein has a prominent Regulus and a couple of the other ones that have had these prominent just wee, um, Larry Pratt from the new Sasha Baron Cohen movie, I'm pretty sure if I recall correctly, he has a whacking prominent Regulus. Um, <clears throat> but Regulus is where things can really fall. It's, it's the harder they come, the harder they fall. And he's got that straight on the descendant, <clears throat> which I made another video about explaining that. Um, that's where, what we're, like the mirror, what we see in other people. So Regulus is actually like the other royal stars, like Aldebaran and Antares and Algol, which he also has an important contact, which I'll get to. Um, all of these high voltage fixed stars make for a person who has a great deal of capacity. Each, any one of these fixed stars could make this um, a very bright, gifted person. He has all of them, and, and they're on the angles, okay? He's got 
Antares on the Midheaven, Aldebaran on the IC, Folus on Algol, and then Regulus on the Descendant. And then... Yeah, he's got the North Node at 27 Pisces, which is almost the very end of the Zodiac. And then he's got Chiron at 25 Gemini, so that's across from the whole Stellium. So this is a person who has really paid their price in life, but he's got all this he's got all this high voltage energy going on in his life, all this access to to the fast track, you could say. And if his integrity flags even slightly, he will derail in an awful, awful fashion. Um, I don't see that happening for him. See, that's the thing when we have these awful fixed star contacts, gentle viewer Sandy, which I also have a few. Um, <clears throat> They really are just a warning sign that we need to keep our integrity up to speed. And think about what integrity is. Integrity is wholeness, right? It's like, think about integers. Think about integration, okay? Think about being an integrated person. So it's more than just not being a liar, right? It's actually owning all of your life and using it all together in an organized and positive way. So young Pharaoh has... Folis, again, is a centaur who was tasked with guarding the sacred wine of the centaurs. And the other centaurs left and left him alone to guard the sacred wine. And then Hercules showed up and talked him or tricked him or whatever, but got the wine from Folis and drank it. So the other ones were all super pissed. So Folis is the one who gives up the family secrets. Um, Mr. Pharaoh has Folis on Algol, the blinking demon, which is where we take the lid off of Pandora's box. I think... Those two are pretty much self-explanatory, and that's in the third house for him. <clears throat> the third house of communication and words. <laughs> Thoughts and words. So, um, he has, the vertex is the point of destiny. That is a point of, like, something that you were fated or destined to do. He has the vertex at 16, Virgo. He has Nessus, the wife beater, the, uh, the classic asteroid of male gender abuse. Um, at 14 Virgo, so two degrees off of the vertex. And then that is almost directly across from asteroid Machiavelli, which is where we show the scheming and the, the planning and the backstabbing kind of stuff. Machiavelli is in the first house um, at 18 Pisces. So understand that his whole first house not his ascendant, which is actually an Aquarius and thus ruled by Uranus and Saturn, which are both ruled by Jupiter, right? But then the first house is Pisces. So basically Jupiter and um, Jupiter and Neptune are running this whole shebang. Jupiter is running his whole chart. And then his Neptune, I think, is quite strong, especially lovely. He has that asteroid, Ceres, the Earth Mother, Compassion, directly conjunct Venus in the 11th house in Capricorn, in late Capricorn. So that's very grounded, very stable, very long-term and mature vision of the divine feminine that he has. Really beautiful and blissful. That could actually be in the 12th house now that I'm looking at it. I'm good. I would have to look at the numbers. It looks like it might actually be technically in the 12th house. And so this would be something that he may even take for granted a little bit, maybe a little bit oblivious to what a wonderful um, vision of mothering and womanhood that he was personally gifted with. So, so many nice things to talk about with young Ronan Farrow. He's got uh, Lilith at 13 Leo in the sixth house, and then that is conjunct, not real super close, but sort of over in that same neighborhood with um, Vesta, the true believer. So... I see him as a very sincere person who has a deep personal vested interest in um, combating the demons of combating the demons of uh, toxic masculinity. That's something that he was born to do, that he was fated to do. Um, his Neptune is here in the eleventh house, meaning that that's something that his. I think that impacts beautifully on his expansive Jupiter uh, with all this strong Jupiter. The fact that he's got that 11th house 
Neptune makes him one who is much better able to not go in the selfish direction with his Jupiter and say, all of the world is me. Um, I am the state, the, you know, I am the living embodiment of all y'all, so all of my whims must be catered to. Um, he went quite the opposite direction, and I think that's beautiful, and I'm excited to share it with you guys on this Sunday morning. But I do have a bunch of paying work I need to do. So um, I will attempt to write this lovely Ronan Farrow chart up sometime not too distant future, but I'll throw this on the interwebs just for now so that you can have something to look at on a Sunday if you'd like. And then I'll be back with you, bitches. So check me out at artandunderminds.wordpress.com to see this and give me a little time. There's a time delay between me getting all my ducks in a row. Bear with me. But um, that will be Ronan Farrow Astro Explained will be up there. And then you can also sign up for free advance copies of my upcoming Donald Trump Astro Explained, which will be out this October. You can sign up for free copies until September the 15th at my blog. And I'll see you there.